They see the body and it's at this point where the asshole thinks, hey, maybe she killed her. She's been butchered. Six girls came down to this cave. One came out, covered in her friend's blood. And they're like, we were victimizing her, you asshole. And Sarah's like, I think there's something down here, guys. There's nothing down here that could have done this to a person. Okay, well, you saw the body, right? So you're basically just making a statement that you know is false. They keep wandering around the cave until finally Sarah has some sort of flashback. Except instead of telling everybody what happened, she just makes a scene and runs away. Which way? Sarah decides she's gonna play hide and seek while the asshole goes to look for her. They try to recreate the night vision scene from the first movie. And pose! Wait a minute, he was using night vision because it's pitch black, meaning there's no other light, but it's perfectly lit. God damn it. What a surprise, the asshole shoots the gun and the cave starts collapsing. And this bitch somehow perfectly gets trapped in between rocks. Okay. So then these guys find the camera from the first movie and we see footage of the girls before they went on their caving expedition. And I'm thinking, wow, the characters actually seem natural again. We needed footage on that for them to see stuff that we hadn't seen before. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm happy to do that because in a way I'm kind of maintaining that integrity from the first film. Oh, okay. Anyway, the clip starts where the crawler first appears, and they're like, that's here! But the camera wasn't left there, it was taken down to the body pit. Plus, it doesn't look anything like the location in the first film. So just as they see the creature, and pose! Another one appears. What up? Sarah appears from the darkness just to make this girl shut up. And then she's like, lights off. So the other guy tries to find them using night vision, but everything's extremely lit. And then he dies. And then Sarah's a sarcastic bitch. Don't worry. It's just your mind playing tricks on you. That ought to teach you to tell me I was imagining things, even though earlier I actually was. So we get back to this girl who's still stuck. And I guess one of the crawlers like jerks off on her hand or something. And then it tries to eat her. So she's like, oh, I guess I better just crawl out up here. So these two lovers meet up. And since this movie has absolutely nothing original to offer, they try to recreate the greenlit scene from the first movie. Be very, very quiet while the crawler sneaks by. Oops, an electronic device made some noise. What the fuck? Get rid of it, get rid of it. Looks like we're safe for now. Anyway, they both die. When making a movie, there's a certain art that goes into deciding what to show and how to show it. And I believe that a large part of that is deciding what not to show. And it's the job of dipshits that want to make money off of those movies to go through them with a fine-toothed comb and find parts where they can say, Oh, didn't show it. Time to make a sequel. And this is why they brought back Juno. Because although Sarah did stab her in the leg, and the last images we see of Juno are her facing an impossible battle, followed by the sound of her screams, Technically, they didn't show her die. She doesn't even act like she got stabbed in the leg. <laughs> Continuity. <laughs> so Sarah and this character are in a tunnel. And there's a crawler just hanging out at the end of the tunnel. And then a rat comes. <laughs> and the crawler hears her scream. So they're like, quick, we gotta go down that hole. Sarah goes down the hole and this girl's like, oh no, I'm done for. And then Sarah's like, wacha. And then they go into a shit swamp. But how the hell did Sarah go down and then come back up perfectly clean? Not to mention even reaching the ceiling. Then they have a fight scene and she's like, close up on hairpin so you can tell what it is. Rawr! So then the girls just realize that yes, this is actually a poop swamp, meaning they didn't smell it up until now. And that crawler totally jumped in knowing full well what it was. Whatever floats your boat. The surviving characters run into each other, and it's all like, awkward, I totally left you for dead so that I could escape, sorry about that. And Juno's like, I know the way out, I didn't go out before because my light died, and you fucking stabbed me. And Sarah's like, I don't want to follow you. And then Dickface handcuffs her, because you know that's smart, you're going to be climbing around, you want someone attached to your arm. So they're walking along this thing, and since this guy's so fat, it collapses underneath him. She's like, Narm! Juno tries to keep her from falling, and Rios is like, what do I do? And they're like, cut it! And I guess her interpretation of cut it wasn't to cut the handcuffs, but she immediately reacted by hacking through the asshole's arm. Oh no, not that guy, nobody wanted him to die. And when he falls, the crawlers also fall, so I guess they were only anchoring themselves on him. They weren't even holding onto the wall, they were just kind of perched on his body as they were eating him. They get to the feeding pit because they have to get past it to escape. And dun dun dun, one of them's on steroids! They're about to sneak past them when... <laughs> Yeah, he just came back to life to fuck them over for some reason. Then I have this fight scene. Whoa. 
Wait a minute. It's actually kind of hot. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Anyway, Juno dies and then comes back to life to kill the thing that killed her and then dies again. And Sarah cares about it this time. That makes sense. And it looks like they're done for. But then Sarah makes the most hilarious self-sacrifice ever. Didn't show it, time to make a sequel. Here, you don't even have to write it. Could Sarah still be alive? I would like her to return since she is the only connection back to the first film where it all started. I would like to think, and these are stupid ideas I know, she ducked at the last second and the creatures attacked each other, or the place where she was standing collapsed because of the weight and they all fell with Sarah falling into a pool of water. So is there anyone else who would like her to return or anyone with some crazy ideas of how she could have survived? I mean the death was off screen, which means they didn't want to set things in stone in case they want to bring her back. Sarah theory. Spoiler. At the end, this is what I thought happened. Sarah killed the big crawler. It noticeably had a deeper voice, and the other crawlers acknowledged it as it entered the cave. In short, Sarah killed the Alpha. When Sarah shouted, it may have been to free Rios, but the crawlers interpreted it as her victory cry for having killed the Alpha. Now she becomes the new Alpha. Discuss. Do you get it now? How does it feel? So then Rios escapes, and they try to recreate the stairway sequence from the first movie. Basically, one looks aesthetically pleasing and one doesn't. What made the escape so powerful in the first movie is that when you're watching the film, your eyes literally adjust to the darkness. As soon as she escapes, everything seems way too bright to be normal. You get put into the character's perspective. And of course, the second movie lacks this because they've had fucking retarded lighting the whole time. So then she escapes and runs around the woods for a little bit, when suddenly, BAM! Yeah, the creepy old guy just hit her with a shovel, and then he just moves her body to the opening of the hole as if to feed the crawlers. Is that their feeding hole? Is he evil? I don't get it. Why did he save Sarah at the beginning? Is he racist? It's not like he only saved her because he was worried about evidence. I mean, he's just leaving a body on the ground. This is retarded. I think what they were trying to do with this ending was instill the same feeling of shock and hopelessness from the end of the first movie. I thought you hated the end of the first movie. That's what your whole movie's based on. Fuck. And pose! So in the end, I'd like to say that this was a good first try, but it wasn't. You had like the same crew and you fucked it. I think this goes to show just how much of an impact a director can have on a project. So please, you can keep making movies, but please don't smudge any movies that are already good. This film, people could criticize you because on the last one it was left on such a high note. You can think, oh, we've got a fan base, they're gonna come anyway. Well, they may come, but they're gonna be ready to go, that's not as good. But, you know, it is.